G'day fellow hustlers, it's uh, Shadow here. Uh, this is a video I've been meaning to do for a while and quite a few people have asked about this sort of stuff and um, I think it was McNasty was the latest one who, who wanted to know more about setups and how your jewellery and all that sort of stuff affect things and who should be wearing what. So I'll start off by taking you through my squad. There's a lot of different... Um, combinations now the game's that diverse now that uh, there's so many different setups but um, this is what works for me so I'm running a heavy tank <clears throat> um, I'd prefer this to have more more shield slots uh, I'm, I'm not really after damage with this guy but uh, it's, it's the best I've got so this armor increases health by 65%, which is which is really good, and it's got really strong armor. It starts at 9,000, and with the um, with the orange gem, it adds another two and a half thousand. Running the splash axe, uh, like I said, it's not there to do damage, but this axe, when its special ability goes off, uh, can wipe out um, whole lines, especially if you, if it goes off on the mages. Uh, Got a couple of damage slots. Crit, which I don't like. I don't, I don't recommend uh, concentrating on crit. Uh, avoid it if you can. Dodge isn't too bad. It's similar to crit though. It's not the greatest thing in the world because they're random stats. They're not guaranteed to, to go off. But they're extremely random, so half the time they're not even going to do anything. So in, in the necklace, once again, we're going for high armor and high health. So I've got another 2,500 with the orange gem there. At the moment I've only got uh, purples there. And I've got magic purple armor. And uh, on the ring, it's it's actually quite a good ring. Because like I said, I'm not after damage. It, he's he's defensive, this guy. He's there to be a wall. So four, four dodge slots is quite good. Uh, that, that helps with the defensive mode. And chain lightning, I put this on this guy because uh, he's in the front line. Uh, if he dies, the chain lightning's already gone off because chain lightning goes off pretty pretty quick at the front. Right, so that's my main tank. You should not have that. Okay, this I'm just gonna have to quickly change my setup back. This isn't um, this isn't how it's normally set up. Find all my artifacts. All right, so that's better. So I'm running uh, a high powered uh, or high uh, spell power mage with the um, new concentration of Wrath Orb. I'm using this for the instantly kills the target if the target has less than 35%. I'm using that because of uh, this armor here. And Riga's armor. So you see, it's 130,000 health, uh, increases health by 50%. Plus, it's got three health slots. So people, a lot of people are running this because it's it's, well, like, like I said with my other tank, it creates a wall. And the good thing about this weapon is once their health hits 35%, it'll kill them. So it goes off pretty early when people are running and Riga's armor. So it works really well. Uh, the, this I'm using this armor. It's got the highest spell power out of any of my armor, and when it dies, it um, produces a healer, which is pretty good. Uh, the new Happy Pendant Amulet. Well, once again, it's got the highest spell power. Uh, it's got four spell power slots, which is really good. I was really happy to get that. Uh, and look, I've, I've just got um, the best magic wing I've got suited for for this one. Um, I prefer one of. Um, <clears throat> more more um magic damage slots but you know you use what you've got and uh a 45 30 uh book of prophecy the um time distortion so i, I use the, the there's two options this i use the enemy minion summoned there's a there's a big argument out there which one's better if it's um on uh, enemy resurrection or any resurrection or the minion summon i like minion summon because most people at the top level are either running the snail or uh, abysmal summons 
uh, both of those are um, are a minion. So I find if, if they're running the snail, this one activates fractionally quicker than um, than a resurrection one. I think I've got both. I'll show you which one. Yeah. So when when an ally is resurrected, I, I find the minion summon goes off just that little bit quicker most of the time. So it's a bit of a trade off. Uh, if I come up against someone who doesn't have a minion, a snail, mine's not going to activate as quick. But like I said, pretty much everyone I come across does. Uh, my second mage, this is just a res mage. <clears throat> so just a standard resurrection orb. I've got that same armor that I have on the other guy. And it's got uh, 9,600 armor as its base and increases its health by 60%. Uh, this is this. I only got two of these types of armor. They come available in the in the uh, arena store with that high armor. You don't normally have that much of a high armor starting. I'll show you what, what a normal. That's not bad. That one's got eight thousand and one thousand damage. So your standard armor, you can, that one's got six thousand, seven eight. They don't normally have over nine thousand, seven thousand, six thousand. So that, that was a really good one that came up in the store. Gave you, gave, gave you over 9,000 starting. Didn't get the best slots of that one. The other one, obviously, I got a lot better. But um, like I said, you use what you've got. And once again, the amulet, you go for... Um, I am actually wasn't too concerned about the spell power. More two armor slots and two health slots because I'm trying to keep this guy alive. I'm not too worried about uh, resing with a lot of health. I just want him to res, res as much as I can, which is why he's also got um, a spellcaster, and that cuts in on, uh, when an ally dies, which is really good. It's what you want. And once again, with the magic damage one, I'm not worried about uh, it actually having uh, magic damage. He's not there to kill people, so I've just used whatever I've got that had decent dodge. And my third mage, uh, this one's really good. Got the stun wand. At the moment, I've got mine up to 4.2 seconds. I'd, I'd rather a lot. I'd, I'd, I really want a lot more spell power. So at the moment, I'm actually hoping to get um, some more spell power gems and some better armor with um, with some spell power slots. But I don't really have the spell power gems to fill them. So I'm still using green spell power gems. So, yeah, I'd rather upgrade these ones to have some more spell power than what they've got. But the start stun one works really well for stopping people in their tracks. So whilst, whilst, this, whilst they're stunned, I've got this guy, my tank, and my archer cutting loose. Now this guy is a second tank. Uh, not too many people have this armor. Uh, I, I, um, I find it really good. Uh, as you can see, the damage is two thousand to two thousand five hundred. It's more than double what the um, what the normal armor does. So that, that damage one thousand to twelve hundred. This one's double that, and it also increases um, armor by sixty percent, which is uh, I think the second best type of armor after the increased health. Uh, I've got daggers on him. Now I've got I've got the daggers on this guy. I'm using him solely to counter. People that use the uh, triple damage mage, the one that um, attacks the uh, enemy who deals the most damage, and every now and then will will do triple triple damage. If it's your archer, which which ninety percent of people, their most damage is done by their archer, or or an assassin, uh, anyone wearing archer armor, that triple damage will wipe them out in one hit. My guy with one hundred thirty five thousand health won't die straight away. And hopefully give this thing time to kick in and, and give it some more health. And that'll deal extra damage, keep my guy alive so he can continue dishing out uh, roughly 17,000 per second. So that's really effective. And I've got the snail. And um, I, I'd like a better ring than this. Well, it's not too bad having three dodge. Dodge is pretty good on these guys and, and damage. I just need to upgrade the, um, the gems in there. 
So yeah, that's why I'm running that guy. It's, it's solely to counter the triple damage mages. And then you see at the back, I've got my, my archer. He's dealing 15,300, so less than, um, less than my tank, which is why, as I explained, I run that tank to, to counter that triple damage mage that won't hit this guy. So he's got a um, stunbo. And he's also running a ruin. Explosive armor, which is which is pretty good. Deals 20k splash damage to enemies around him when he dies. Standard armor, armor amulet. And I've got this guy at the back um, with with the uh, lunar dragon ring. So the guy he hits, uh, the healing is uh, healing effectiveness reduced by 21%. And uh, inflicts an extra six thousand five hundred damage. So that's that's pretty good to have uh, on your when you go at the back. Now I've just got to change this. I have that on him for Clan Wars. Uh, that um, the unicorn head. So that that's the teleport for six and a half seconds. I'll run that on my archer for for Clan Wars because. Seems to teleport quicker uh, if you use them on an archer. <clears throat> and in clan walls, if your guy teleports at the start, their tanks turn around and run to the back of the screen, and gives um, gives your tank access to to their mages right from the start, which which is really really effective in clan walls. Only happens in clan walls. It doesn't seem to happen um, in the arena. So that's why. In the arena, I put this guy with the um, unicorn, uh, so he jumps up the back and wipes out their archers, which is really effective. Yeah, so that's what I run. Uh, one of the reasons I run things. Now, I think I think he was asking why, what, what, what are the best types of um, rings and things that you want on people, or what, what stats you want for people. Like I said, I try and avoid crit stats. Uh, I don't find weapons that increase crit to be very good. So if we go through, yeah, see, look that one. A 33% chance of increasing crit by 65%. So there's only a 33% chance of it um, activating. And even when it does, your crit's only got a, a random chance of going off also. So that 33% chance is reduced dramatically. I find it a lot better to use ones like this when attacking has a 32% chance of increasing damage by 65% because no matter what if, if that 32% chance comes off it's gonna do that extra 65% damage for 10 seconds no matter what it's not relying on then a random dice roll for you to hit a crit it's like during during this this 10 seconds there's no guarantee you're gonna get a crit hit in any way so your 33% chance of um, Increasing crit by 65% becomes a lot less. So much better to go for something that increases the damage. Or well, if we look through, nah, I like this one's not too bad. After any resurrection has been activated, a fighter equipped of this weapon deals 80% more damage. That's that's pretty good. So look what else. Another one increasing damage. That's fairly good. Uh, the other ones are decreasing uh, enemy armor. I'm not sure if I've got one that um, will show that. Most of them are, I've got a uh, increasing damage. But there are ones that will decrease the enemy's armor. There we go. There's one there. 32% chance of decreasing an enemy's armor by 70%. So that's also a good one to, to use. Avoid the ones that increase your dodge or increase your crit. As you said, they are uh, less effective and less chance of them going off. Uh, same goes for uh, their, uh, the other special effect that they come come with, like, like these daggers here. Crit, it's got a crit of 1,500. I'd rather that have a dodge than a crit, but um, like that one there's got dodge. But uh, also 30% uh, chance of... 100% damage in five seconds. That's that's alright, but the critical damage increased by 100%. Uh, that's the reason I don't use that. I'd rather it increase increase the damage. Uh, and I, I on your tank, as I said, you go 
go for um, dodge dodge and armor on your tank uh, and on on things like your uh, archers at the back uh, you want dodge and damage pretty much so your archers at the back are all the ones that deal the most damage so they're the ones you want um, you want to have your high damage on yeah, I, I find uh, your rings that deal the most damage uh, best to be on um, on your archer but I've got to play a bit of a um, a balance game with my guys so as I said I want um, I want this character here to deal more damage than my archer okay so I, I hope that helps if she's deciding what sort of setup you want you want to run that's um, that's what I run but like I said, there's, there's a lot of different setups. Well, let's let's just pick out someone random, one of the top top guys in in the game. So we'll just go for Kumba for now. He's at the top of the game, so we'll have a look at what he runs. So he's gone for a high, high damage at the front there, 20,000 and 21,000 armor, Jesus. So as you can see, he's running, well, as I was saying, in Drika's armor, as a lot of people run. It, was, it increases your health, this one increases by 50%. So it's got 130,000 health, plus he's got a bonus 35,000 health, so that's 165,000 health. Uh, we'll look down here, he's probably got a lot more health down here too. Another 11,000, so 176,000. So he's running 176,000 health before it's increased by 50%. Uh, so you can do the math on that. Add an extra 135. Sorry. What was that? What's 176,000? Just under 90,000 extra health. So uh, you're looking at like. 260,000 health this guy's got uh, which is why I run that orb uh, because once that orb once once itself gets down to 35% which is still pretty high when you've got 260,000 health the orb instant kills but uh, yeah so he's gone he's gone for mass damage with his um, with his tank and high armor and high health which is really effective uh, and you can see he's got the increased damage uh, honest, honest daggers, which is what you want. You don't want the crit. Uh, his ring, same as mine. Lots and lots of dodge uh, because you want your tank to be defensive. So lots of dodge is good. His ring's got three, three shields, which is really good. One, one health. That's that extremely good. And the daggers, three damage, one dodge. Once again, that's that's excellent. Uh, let's have a look at his first mage. He's got a resurrect mage. And he's got the stasis armor on that one, so that that's I, I find that if you're not running tank armor on your mage, you want to have um, stasis armor on it uh, because it's it's just going to let, let your um, your mage your res mage last longer. They're going to avoid him and, and go on to someone else, it's giving uh, giving them more chance to to res people. Second one got the stun wand. Uh, it's still. Lots of people running a stun wand. Uh, all the top people are running a stun wand if they've got one. Said, look, if, if you stun someone, uh, jumps to other people, you're dealing a lot more damage whilst they can't do anything. You can see he's got um, what I would like, which is a lot of spell power. Now, I'm not a big fan of this new mind control, the unpleasant surprise. It's I don't see it being that effective at the moment. Um, I'm surprised Nord haven't increased that to three or four seconds. Two seconds doesn't seem, seem to be very effective. Uh, might be for Kumba. Um, it might be working for him. Uh, a lot of people I've seen don't use it. I use it. I, I've got it and I use it in three man waypoints and two man waypoints. Quite effective in those. Not so sure about. Um, not so sure about the arena and things like that though at the moment. So he's got a pretty high powered archer. Pretty standard. So you, you see lots of um, damage gems. It's a stun wand. 
And this is the best you can get for uh, an archer, uh, reanimate with uh, 27, 300 health. If you can get that, put it on your archer. Uh, the best archers in the game have reanimate um, reanimate armor. So that's that's really good. I wish I had some. I, I don't have any, unfortunately. And he's got the lunar ring and uh, the lunar dragon. Uh, yeah, sorry, the lunar dragon ring and the uh, lunar lamp amulet. I'd, if I if using those, I'd prefer to have it with, with a teleporting archer. But um, having it on uh, a non-teleporting archer creates quite a, quite good defense at your back for other teleporters, I guess. So this is his teleporting archer here, which will, which which will be a very similar setup to his other one. Increases damage. Does that one increase damage? No, the other one was done. Uh, that one increases damage. I'd probably swap those around. Have the damage guy, uh, the uh, damage at the back, and the um, the stun one teleporting because your stun mage um, stuns from the front, so it stuns the. It only jumps three or four times. Let's go back and check that. Can't remember off the top of my head. So with each jump, stun was reduced by 0.4 seconds. And the max number of jumps is three. So it's only going to stun four people. So it'll stun the tank or two at the front, then the majors. And so it's not going to stun the archers at the back. So I prefer to have the teleporting. I prefer to have my teleporting archer, this one here, to have the um, the stun bow. I'd swap those over. So that gives the chance of your archer stunning their archers at the back. Which um, won't get stunned by the uh, stun mage. Once again, he's got really good, um, really good jewelry. This might get armor slots and health slots are really good. Uh, lots of damage, lots and lots of damage. Very good. And his last mage is another resurrect mage. I mean, that should have stasis again. Yep. So that's pretty good too. I'd probably have some tank armor on one of those, uh, just add a bit more defense, just to stop their fighters a bit more, slow them down, give um, give his archers a bit more time to deal a bit more damage. But all in all, it's it's an incredible setup. Just that I'm not even close to a setup like this, so that's that's very strong. Yep. So that's why uh, why why he's using what he is. I'd say works for him. You use what you can and what you've got, and that reanimate armor that he's got on his, um, his archers, extremely good. All right, well, I hope that helped. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them um, in the comment section. Uh, hit the su subscribe button if you like. Uh, I've still got some more videos coming up. I'll go over uh, different setups again, uh, different types of equipment. Um, as I said, I've just gone over what I use at the moment. If you don't have a stun wand, I'll take you over some setups that don't have stun wands in my next video. Uh, for those who don't have a stun wand, it, it's not a bad idea to use um, Andrika's club. This thing here, the mace, uh, that's a pretty powerful weapon. It's got um, good damage and the slots have all come with uh, pretty high damage slots, which is really good. And, uh, and special ability increases damage by 60% which is really good uh, and when you put the ruin on it um, I'll show you what happens when you put the ruin on it I'm pretty sure it um, creates a stun over a uh, larger area so rather than just stunning one person it stuns people in a small area so we'll equip that So when, when attacking, 35% chance of stunning enemies within a small area for 2.7 seconds. So that's that's pretty good if you can stun them in, in a certain area, as opposed to being without it, just 2.5 seconds on the person that you're hitting. So if you don't have the um, if you don't have a stun wand, that's a pretty good weapon to be using. Alright, that'll do for now. As I said again. Feel free to subscribe and drop any questions in the comment box and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers fellow hustlers, have a good uh, Easter, uh, I'll see you in the next video.